So one final thing, which is almost a triviality, which is using the opposite of the sum rule. There is almost nothing to describe, but if you have a bunch of terms like this in a sum, then the answer is the sum of the individual integrals. So as a grand finale, we're going to evaluate this integral. And I'm just going to pick one that takes half the board. Okay, so the point of this is to illustrate the sum rule. And the best way to describe the sum rule is not to describe it at all. And to say that the answer is obviously the antiderivative of this plus the antiderivative of this plus the antiderivative of this with a minus sign plus the antiderivative of this with a minus sign. You guys are with me on that? Yeah, so I'm not going to dignify this with a theorem or even a statement. We're just going to do this integral. All right, this. Do you want me to rattle through them? Let me do that and then write them all down. I know that this came from x squared, but x squared would give me an extra factor of 2, which is not here. So that's a 1 half, so this will be 3 halves x squared. Next one. 7 11 came from 18 11. Maybe I'll write that part down. x to the 18 11. I will now no longer think about the power because I know I got it correctly. So I'll just realize that when I take the derivative of this, 18 11 comes down, so I have to make up for it with 11 18. 11 18 times 3 is 11 9. No. 11 6. 11 18 times 3 is 11 6. Okay, this is a nice inviting natural log. So minus 4 log of x. And finally, I know that this comes from the square root of x. I will mentally throw in a factor of 2 here, which will turn this for me because I know the answer is near into a 62. And now I'm looking at precisely this multiple, with a minus sign, of the derivative of square root of x. Very valuable to learn to mentally put the two in here and then make up for it at, on the, at the top. So the answer is minus 62 square root of x plus c. Look, it didn't fit. Plus c. Okay, this is the sum rule.